On June 1st, 2019, my husband had a heart attack and died on the front lawn. I was not home. When my son looked out the front window and saw his father laying in the grass, he tried to resuscitate him, but he was already gone. I was an hour away, and getting back to him was the longest hour of my life. When I arrived, the driveway was full of police cars and neighbors, and this was my crash course in widowhood. That summer, my son and I ate meals out of a blue cooler by the back door that were delivered every day. The neighbors had the forethought to pay for a landscaper so that we would never have to mow the lawn again. And a GoFundMe campaign covered two years of tuition for my son, for which I am eternally grateful. But when he went to college in October, uh, sorry, in, in August, I found myself quite alone in my house for the first time. You see, I got married when I was 23. I'd been with my husband since I was 17, and I never had the opportunity to live alone once. So I shopped and cooked and ate dinner alone, and I had to figure out how to do everything in an old house by myself. And as time moved on, I learned to do some things. I got a better paying job, and I refinanced the house and got a roof. Needed a roof. But there was this one day when I was in the basement with the shop back, vacuuming up 40 gallons of water from the hot water heater that had burst, when I lost it. I was not just sad, I was not just grieving, I was angry. And I said, where are you? Why did you leave me? But I kept going, okay? I kept going. I, I think people on Facebook thought I was killing it, man, because I let them think that. But four years in, the anger was still there, and I did not know how to get past it. And I realized I needed to figure out how to forgive my husband. And I needed to forgive myself for my anger. But I didn't know how. So as one does, I Googled it. <laughs> I asked ChatGPT and Siri, how do I forgive my husband for dying? I didn't like any of the answers. They were all the same. Oh, you have to accept it. You need to write a letter to him. You need to journal. I'm like, oh, blah, blah, blah. But then I came across this book. It was called The Book of Forgiveness, aptly named. And it was written by Archbishop Desmond Tutu from South Africa. In 1995, this apartheid-torn country was struggling, and he saw how people could not move forward. He believed that this country could not move forward without forgiveness, so he founded the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And people came to the table and confessed atrocities. And the families of victims came to the table and said, we forgive you. And I said, if they can forgive, maybe I can figure it out too. So the first exercise in the book is to find a, a stone that fits into the palm of your hand. And you need to hold it without putting it down for six hours. And I tried. I didn't last for six hours, but I got the point. Your hurt and your sadness and your anger are a burden. And I wanted to figure out how to put that stone down so I did the exercises. I did the meditations, I did the prayers, I did the journaling. And one day, 
I woke up and I felt a little different. There had been some movement. My heart felt lighter. I started to feel a little bit of joy. And I realized that I forgive him. And even more so, I forgive myself. And now I move forward into the world with joy. Thank you.